up, beautiful people? This is Pretty Girl Love Shop content. This is my recap slash review for HBO's own We Own This City Part 1. Guys, this is a wonderful show, HBO. You guys did it again. Home run, home run, okay? If you guys aren't aware, this show is covering police corruption in Baltimore, Maryland. It is actually also based on a book. And, you know, some true events. So, yes, this is definitely a great show to watch. I definitely recommend it. Thumbs up. So, let's go ahead with the recap, okay? So, it begins with Sergeant Wayne Jenkins, okay? And, yeah, he is ahead of the Gun Trace Task Force in Baltimore, Maryland. And he is giving a lecture of some sorts, okay? It looks like it's some rookies, maybe, you know, some, you know, team members. But, yeah, these, these kids definitely look fresh out of <laughs> training camp, okay? So, he's pretty much, you know giving them the raw deal about good policing versus bad policing and pretty much letting them know like, okay, beating up people is not going to get you anywhere, okay? Good police work equals information and intel, okay? Once you have that, you would have it all. You would have your cases and yes, that will lead to many great arrests, okay? And I need to mention the actor that plays uh, Wayne, his name was John, um, Berthon, I believe. Superb actor. I've seen him in numerous projects and movies, and he does not disappoint. Like, his acting is A1 sauce, okay? So, you guys, the cast, yeah, we'll get into that throughout the show, okay? And, you know, this show, of course, it has the same writers as The Wire, and so I appreciate the nostalgia that it's providing, okay? The scene of Baltimore streets just feels all yummy. And his speech is making me really nostalgic about uh, the policing style that McNulty and um, Carter had. You know, they wasn't always about the rah, rah, roughing up the people. They wanted to make sure they had the good people in their pocket to be able to get information. And so... It seems like, you know, it's proven very, <laughs> very uh, helpful for, you know, his cases or whatnot, but we'll get into him a little later, all right? So, y'all, we're going to hear a lot about Freddie Gray in this. It's a lot of triggers in this show. I swear, it was at least five times where I was triggered, like, <laughs> girl, calm down. Like, you know, just get you riled up and upset, and the wire never really did that. But this show is definitely doing that to me. So beware, there are some trigger warnings, okay? So we see the feds, okay? They are interrogating someone, okay? And his name is Mamadou, okay? But he said, call me G-Money, okay? This is New Jack of the City. I was like, okay, G-Money. So yeah, your boy is giving me like JT of the five heartbeats <laughs> feel. Like, I mean, he has a little wig on or what have you. Like, he is definitely giving me JT vibes. Okay, so watch your girl. All right. So they're pretty much asking him about none other than Wayne Jenkins. And I'm like, what's going on here? Hmm, okay. Duly noted. All right. So um, we are in 2017 at this point. Okay. And so we see Jenkins. He is leading this house raid. And yeah, he finds out that in this house, there's all of the guns, okay? There's big guns, little gun, guns, medium guns. And it seems like they're alluding to the fact that there was, you know, possibly some money or what have you. So it was a very successful raid. And yeah, <clears throat> we see him later on walking into the homicide department. And he is um, actually talking to Detective Sean Suter, okay? And yes, he is played by the none other than aka Marlo of the wire okay so i'm definitely loving loving that hbo and the writer actors are really utilizing their talent from the wire all right and pretty much right now sean he is the head of the homicide department and we learned that he is two years from retirement um, and based on the dialogue, it seems like him and Wayne came up in the ranks together. They may have, you know, been, you know, inducted into the police force together. And you could tell the way he's looking at Wayne, like he's a little weary of your boy Wayne. So I'm sure he's familiar with your boy <laughs> in terms of any, you know, dealings that he is into. All right. So yeah, let's keep 
our eye on Wayne, okay, because his name is coming up all sorts of <laughs> situations, all right? But yeah, Wayne was like, you, I, I got a lot of guns over here, and I, I'm sure we can connect some of these guns to some of these open murder cases that you have going on, okay? So yeah, I'm doing a good deed, all right? And so we're back at the, you know, Fed investigation, and they're asking, I would call him G-Money, all right, about Brill, okay? And um, yeah, Brill is um the uh, street name of Antonio Shampshire, and he's asking, like, hey, how, how long have you been involved, you know, with these robberies and with, you know, this, you know, illegal life, whatever, with this person? And he was like, oh, five years, okay, you know, and he said, what about the robberies? And it was like, well, since 2008. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's kind of like a decade, all right? And he was, you know, asking the feds, like, hey, how did you find out about us and what's going on? And I'm like, oh, they the feds. Okay, they find everything. <laughs> but yeah, at this point, he's looking like a perp, okay? So we see two detectives, okay? They seem to be, you know, detectives in the suburbs, the outskirts of Baltimore. And uh, the first detective, Hawk, okay, he was actually poo on the wire. So another familiar face I am happy to see. And then we have another one, uh, McDougal, okay? So they're partners and they're investigating this overdose in this home. And yeah, this, the girl, she died, but, you know, her boyfriend, well, I would say friend, uh, boy toy, you know, he's, of course, kind of mourning because he just waking up from his little stupor. And they were questioning him, like, hey, like, who did you cop from? Where did you cop from? Because, yeah, these little baggies are very much familiar, okay? Is that common? Like, y'all let me know in the real drug world. Like, do they really be having, like, logos or what have you on their drug packages? Let us just know, okay? <laughs> I mean, I see it a lot on TV shows, but I'm not sure if that's really real in real life. It probably is, okay? But, yeah. He pretty much gives him the name Anderson slash Black. And he tells him, well, yeah, I, you know, cop at this little so situation bear, you know, a little chicken joint or what have you, okay? And so the officers leave, and they was like, yeah, this is um, Trump Shires, you know, which is a.k.a. Brill. This is his signature bag. So, yeah, we need to see what's going on up in here, all right? So we are introduced to Nicole Steele, okay? She works for the Office of the Civil Rights, and she's on her lunch break, minding her business, okay, getting some seafood, what have you. And she's driving, and she actually encounters a police brutality situation, okay? These cops, they're roughing up this African-American male. The citizens are all around them with the cell phones and whatnot. I'm sure they're on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, you know, just all of the lives, what have you. And yeah, She's at the light, and she started recording herself, and eventually the cops got aggravated, and they just, they left. <laughs> they was like, you guys can police yourselves, okay? I don't get paid enough. I'm over it. So, yeah, they left. I'm like, okay, do y'all be doing that? Okay, let us just know, all right? So, we are... um introduced to Nicole's office and, you know, her co-workers, what have you. And she is introduced to Ahmed, okay? He is a trial attorney sent by the De Department of Justice, all right? And they was pretty much conversing about, you know, how he got there, what have you. And it's funny because this reminds you, it's 2017. And she says, you better hope that Hillary wins in the election because if it goes wrong, you won't have anything to do up in here, okay? And so he was like, there's no way Trump will win. There's no way he would win. <laughs> oh, Lord, we can turn back the hands of time, all right? So she was letting him know, like, hey, we don't really litigate up in here. We just, you know... Hold hands and twist arms, all right? So we kind of limited up in here, all right? So we see Hawk and Madougal. They're, you know, going to kill Patrick, okay? He works in the city, and they're trying to get more intel on this Anderson, a.k.a. black guy, all right? And, you know, he was telling uh, Kirk Patrick, uh, Madougal was, he was like, hey, we had four overdoses, you know, recently, and two in your city, okay? So... It looks like this logo is behind all of this, so we need to figure out what is going on, all right? So, Kim Patrick, he's not really sure if Anderson, a.k.a. Black, is working with uh, Brill, a.k.a. Shrumpshire, but he offers a little bit of intel. He was like, hey, he has a Jeep Cherokee. It's in this girl's name, but yeah, you know, we can work off of that, all right? So I'm like, all right, you know, you know I like seeing the police work and what have you. So we see Ahmed and Nicole... They are having breakfast, and they're just pretty much kind of familiarizing, you know, you know, their situations with each other. And you could tell Ahmed, he's still passionate. 
he, you know, is still frustrated about, you know, all the police brutality because your girl, Nicole, she is pretty much giving all of the stats, okay? She said in the city of 600,000 people, there has been about 300,000, you know, police stops. Okay, and there are several men that has been stopped over 30 times in the past few years. Like, that is a problem. So, man, he's getting all turned up. And Nicole, you know, she's, you know, a little more calm. But I can tell she's a little possibly desynthesized because, you know, she's probably used to this type of situation. So, you know, maybe her passion, I won't say it's gone, but it's a little subdued, if you will. Okay, so, y'all, we're at this stakeout. We locate the black Cherokee. So we're doing intel in a little van. You know how that goes, whatever. And yeah, it seems as though um, Black, aka Anderson, he has a history of cooperating. So that's a good thing for the police, all right? So Nicole, okay, this whole episode, Nicole is getting the work done, okay? We see her at the uh, mayor's office, okay? And she's an African-American woman. And yeah, she was like, well, I asked the commissioner to resign because the numbers are all the way up, okay? Since, you know... The situation with Freddie Gray, the murders, the crimes, the robberies have been up. And I can't account the date of um, Freddie Gray's uh, funeral. Commissioner was on his way on vacation to Grease Child. And I'm like, oh, she had to order him back. I was like, oh, Commissioner, that was bad timing, okay? But I know you lost a pretty little coin at that Grease vacation, okay? Like, I hope you... I want to say I, I hope he, you know, was able to recover because he was trifling. But any other person, I would feel bad, all right? And so she also mentioned that she's resigning, too. And the people that's with her, they kind of, like, smile. And I'm like, see, I can already see the mind games going on up in here, okay? I, I'm trying not to get upset at this point, all right? So we see uh, McDougal and Hawk there, you know, pretty much following Anderson, a.k.a. Black. They follow him to his apartment complex. So he, you know, gets out of the car goes into his apartment when he's all settled in, they put a tracker on his car, okay, just to, you know, get his moves and, you know, see what his patterns of behaviors are, okay? So, we see Nicole next. She is continuing her hunt for some answers, okay? So, she's trying to figure out all the information about some problem cops, you know what I'm saying? Because if you find a problem cop, you want to find, you know what I'm saying, some of the problems in the city. And so the public defender named Daniel Herschel, okay, he has a history of brutality and unsustained complaints. Like he showed pictures of some of the black males that he's arrested and the injuries that they sustained under Herschel's um, care or lack of care. Like... I was upset, okay? It, it was a mess. And so Herschel, we see him on the street. Another actor I'm familiar with. Some movies I like of it, some movies I don't. But whatever, he's a good actor nonetheless. And yeah, he's pulling over a seemingly, you know, straight, narrow, blue-collar guy with his son. And who it is? It's Slim Charles, one of my favorite characters from the original Wire. So another, another familiar face. But you know, he pulls him over, seemed like on some BS, so he makes him get out the car, going through his wallet, throwing his cards and everything on the ground, being hella disrespectful, of course. I'm going to call him Slim Charles. Slim Charles is like, I'm going to just have to deal with it for the day. And yeah, he ends up leaving Slim Charles alone, but I'm like, you're doing way too much, Herschel, and I can tell we're going to have a problem, all right? So... The detectives, they go to the feds for some backup on this whole case with Anderson and what have you. And they're pretty much saying, like, hey, we're a week away from some warrants, okay? So let's buckle up, all right? And so we see Anderson. He's leaving his apartment complex. And so as he's leaving, we see this car kind of parking, you know, near his spot. And it's, you know, three guys about to rob them, okay? And so familiar face. Um, Mama Do, he's the driver, and there's two other gentlemen with him. So they go into Anderson's apartment. His girl's in there. Of course, we don't get to see inside, but they pretty much rob your boy for everything, okay? And I'm like, I hope the girl's okay. Like, I was thinking they killed her, but it doesn't look like they killed her. So I was like, whew, Lord Jesus, we don't need no more extra charges or crimes in this situation, okay? Drop down in the comments if y'all think robbing drug dealers is wrong and is a crime. Let us just know, okay? And please hit the like button while you're at it, all right? So the detectives, they also noticed that there's a change in pattern in Anderson's, um, you know, situation. They're like, hmm, what's going on here? Like, 
why is he switching up the joint? So they also realize like, hey, he's been staying at the Red Roof Inn, but they're not sure if it's like another girl he's messing with or, you know, a stash house. But they also added a warrant for the Red Roof Inn and his apartment. I was like, ooh, the Red Roof Inn. Ooh. I mean, I've seen a nice one or two, but I mean, I guess. <laughs> is there any more Howard Johnson's or somewhere? I don't know, childhood. Yeah, that didn't seem like a good spot to be in, all right? So we're prepping for the raid, Medulla and Hawk. You know, they're getting all their equipment together. And, you know, they're noticing that IED is now required to accompany them during the raid because, yeah, they want to make sure there are no sticky fingers, if you will, during these type of raids and arrests. And I was like, okay. Whew. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot going on, all right? So we see Nicole. She's now visiting the judge, okay? And... <laughs> He pretty much knew Herschel and his whole deal. He was like, yo, this dude has 50 complaints, all right? And he's still on the, you know, assignment because he gets arrested. He gets the job done. But he has perjured, damn, damn near perjured himself numerous times. So, yeah, he's kind of forbidden from taking the stand, okay? And there's actually a list of 24 officers who no longer can testify, on stand because they've been close to perjuring themselves, okay? But Herschel is not on the list. So I don't know Superman Herschel. I don't know who he messing with, who he cousins with, who's his father-in-law, but he's definitely getting over up in here, all right? So speaking of Herschel, he pulled somebody else over, okay? But he is not as compliant as some Charles, okay? This dude was like, you know, this some BS. I'm over it. Like, I have nothing on me. There's nothing wrong. And Herschel, I guess he's itching, trying to, you know, he ain't beat up nobody in a couple of days. So I guess, you know, he just, he just itching, okay? So he ends up faking an assault and act like the guy, the gentleman hit him. And he ended up headbutting the guy. He was like, well, you know, this is called for backup, what have you. Because, yeah. He assaulted an officer. So his partner, you know, he's African-American. So he went along with it at first. And then the guy's head was just bleeding. Of course, he's on the ground. And the officer was like, no, bro, I'm calling the ambulance because you're not about to get me up in here suspended or fired under your VS, okay? I'm like, oh, I would have been asked for another partner if he rolling like this. Like, this is way too much, okay? But Herschel, he had the nerve to say, people are way too sensitive. And I'm like, oh, <sighs> see child. Let me calm down, okay? So we see Mamadou and his two robber friends. They're in the strip club. You know, they trying to make it rain, drizzle, whatever they trying to do, okay? And yeah, we're introduced introduced to Brill. We now have eyes on him and, you know, we see how he look and everything. And yeah, y'all, to mention, uh, when they raided um, Anderson's house, they didn't find anything because he got robbed, and we just saw the robbers, you know, making it rain on the strippers with his money, all right, and so they noticed that door was damaged, so they're like, hmm, what's going on here, so one of Hawk's, um, co-workers or superiors was like, hey, that tracker was hella expensive, so I'm gonna need you to get that tracker off his car, all right, so he gets the tracker off, but he notices, like, there's something a little off, so he looks under the car again, and there's a whole other tracker, so there's two trackers, looking very similar on this car's, you know, man's vehicle. And he's like, what's going on here? Like, huh? <laughs> you know, they both, you know, look police, you know, certified or what have you. So yeah, he's really like got his eyebrows up. Like, what is going on here? Okay. So they located and got some information on the tracker. It belongs to a John Clue, all right? So keep that name in mind, all right? So Nicole, she's now at the commissioner office. I'm like, girl, are you walking or are you on foot? Is this around, you know, <laughs> the same? I mean, you, you work in downtown, I'm sure. So it's not much of a, you know, a trait. But Lord, you had a busy day, all right? And so we see Mama Do and the other cop, you know, there. Sorry, Mama Do and the other robber, seemingly. Um, they're, you know, chilling, talking on the street, what have you. And you know, John Clue kind of comes up. He has a uniform, but these two guys are in plain clothes. But come to find out, they're cops. So Mamadou and the other guy, um, I believe he was Savino on the wire as well. And he also played in Power. Yeah, y'all. These are detectives, undercover cops. And I'm like, 
things that make you go hmm. So in my head, I'm like, what is going on up in here? Okay, but we know it's about corruption. So we just have to follow this bride, all right? And so we see um that clue actually loaned the tracker to mama dude um but clue actually seems like a straight and narrow guy like he doesn't seem like he's corrupt or anything he just was doing a you know co-worker you know a favor and in a previous scene they mentioned like hey with the budgets and everything sometimes the officers actually foot the bill for their own equipment so it's not out of the ordinary that this particular tracker is not necessarily owned by the police department all right so we see your boy Wayne Jenkins, okay? Wayne, you know, he he has the gift of gab, okay? He is in front of, you know, numerous police officers, numerous ranks, and he's giving a whole presentation, all right? And so he's pretty much letting them know, hey, we need a little more personnel, a little more overtime because our numbers for our department is all the way up, okay? And I'm sorry, the city's numbers are down. So that means I am doing my thug physical, okay? So back up off me all right <laughs> so he's doing well at this presentation so after the presentation he's like in the hallway talking you know to some fellow officers and then we see the commissioner he gives a piece of paper to another officer he was like hey um i need you to contact these officers and let them know to come to the station you know tomorrow morning you know, now don't really tell him what it's for, what have you, just kind of make something up. So I guess, you know, Wayne's name was on the paper. So the officer was like, hey, there's some, you know, misinformation you put on some like vehicle damage. I need you to clear this up tomorrow morning. Okay, so come back to the station and let's get this cleared up. Okay, so they made it seem like, you know, this is, you know, just some regular degular ish. All right. So the so next morning child we see we see your boy wayne he over there walking into the police station with his little swagger right you could tell he's been a while for a while i mean based on um his conversation with sean it seems like they've been in the in the uh forest for at least 18 years if he's you know i believe he says he's two years from retirement so if he's referring to 20 years then okay it's been about 18 years so yeah your boy knows his way around the you know <laughs> the city what have you so, you know, of course, he's, you know, speaking to many officers. So he goes into the building and I guess, you know, he's doing a regular, regular thing, you know, unarming himself, making sure there's no bullets in the chamber, his vehicle, locking his, sorry, in his gun, locking the gun up. So he notices, I'm, he seems like he kind of notices the cold shoulder with the other officers, okay, in the building. They're kind of like highway, like, of course, you could tell this is not normal in a sense. So he's walking up the stairs, two are behind him. Next thing we see. The feds arresting your boy, okay? And so he all cocky. He was like, do y'all know who I am? Like, what are y'all doing? So we see him in an interrogation room. And the commissioner just wanted to, you know, just see him. He went in there. And your boy, Wayne, I guess he was trying to fill him out. And he was just looking at him like, and what? <laughs> he looked scared or shaking or anything, okay? But you could tell he's a little nervous. I'm not sure if they're going to reveal if he has a coat problem or something. But it looked like he ain't. His nose be a little dirty sometimes. He made like the nose candy, what have you. But I guess we'll see. This is only part one. So, Commissioner, he, you know, is disappointed. And, yeah, there's actually seven officers that are caught up in this drama, y'all, of this thievery child. So, yeah, the feds proceed to walk in and talk to Wayne. And the episode ends, y'all. So, yeah, this episode is... is is what I needed, okay? Great television, great content. I definitely appreciated this entire hour, okay? So you guys, let me know what you guys think of this show. Um, drop down in the comments, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber, and I will see you guys next week for part two. Toodles!